Now, the big one, the one that you're all here to talk about is, of course, Erling Haaland. And excuse me for any Norwegians if I'm mispronouncing his name. I know that you're supposed to, I think, elongate the Haaland or something like that, but I'm known for uh, butchering people's pronunciations of their name. Right, look, ladies and gentlemen, Erling Haaland. So here we go. The Dortmund CEO has come out publicly and denied the reports that Haaland has a release clause that becomes active next year in his contract. This is what he had to say. There's no such agreement, and it's not about that. It's about convincing the player about the club and about our plans. We have a clear wish for Erling to stay with us, and we want to convince him and his agent to do that. I'm confident on that front. I think Erling feels at home with BVB. He definitely uh, made the right choice to come here to us last winter. To take another step so soon, I consider that the wrong decision for him personally. And all this comes after Salzburg director or Salzburg sporting director came out and said that he believes that Erling Haaland will land at Liverpool. I think he said next summer, if I'm being correct, at least when he leaves Dortmund. Now, I want to just pick up on something that the Dortmund CEO has said there. He said that there is no buyout clause that comes into effect next summer, and that's false. That's true, but there is a buyout clause. It doesn't come into effect until 2022. And to the best of my knowledge, that buyout clause is 75 million euro. So what do you do then if you're a club like Liverpool? Well, this is what I think may happen. Cast yourselves back to the Naby Keita incident or the Naby Keita deal, the way we took him from Leipzig. We may see Michael Edwards go and do a similar thing. So we know that in 2022, Haaland has this bio clause, 75 million euro, probably equates to about 60, 65 million pound. So what you might happen or might see happen is Liverpool, Michael Edwards, go to Dortmund and maybe put a, a deal in place to get him at the, the end of this season. Maybe try and sort it out in January. Maybe pay a little premium. Maybe pay a little bit on top. Maybe send a young player or two over to Dortmund in the opposite direction to gain experience. There are ways that this deal can be done. You've seen me say no to Koulibaly. You've seen me say no to Kylian Mbappe. You've seen me say... I'm on the fence about Sancho, whether it's possible. I can 100% tell you that a deal to take Erling Haaland to Liverpool is possible. That much I can guarantee you. Financially, it stacks up. Age profile, it stacks up. Ability-wise, it stacks up. Everything stacks up. The relationship is there as well. I know you're going to see him linked to United. You're going to see him linked to Real Madrid. But I, honestly, I think this is the one. I think Erling Haaland will eventually become a Liverpool player. And I say this full of confidence and it's come from nowhere but the more people I speak to about this the more I look into this situation the more articles I read the more journalists stuff that I read I do think this will make sense um, and I said to you earlier on that I wanted to bring this all around to Red Corp acquisition or Red Ball acquisition whatever the name of the company is that Billy Bean has set up to try and invest in FSG there's a lot of talk now that they're very close to obtaining a 25% share in FSG's holdings and that would include everything that would include Liverpool Football Club that would include the Red Sox and all the other interests that FSG have so how does that affect Liverpool well it will free up capital it will free up money and this is the type of statement that you'd want to make. If you're bringing in a new investor like this, you've got Nike on board, lots of things going in the right direction. Erling Haaland is the missing piece. Erling Haaland is Jurgen Klopp's second team. I'm so excited about this potential. I'm not telling you it's a done deal. Do not go out there, quote me and say it's a done deal. All I'm telling you, or all I'm saying, is that of all the deals, the big names that we've seen linked to Liverpool Football Club, this is the one that can be done. This is a deal that Liverpool Football Club are capable of doing from a financial aspect. And of course, the pulling power of Liverpool is tremendous because of where we are right now as a club. Um, the manager that we have, the manager that's committed himself to 2024 and may commit himself beyond the excitement that I'm feeling right now, ladies and gentlemen. I, I can't even... It came from nowhere. Like, it all started with this comment from the Salzburg sporting director that said he expects him to land at Liverpool. That took us all by shock, all of us. But then we see more stuff start to come out, and I've read a, ver a few very good articles. Actually, I'd, I'd recommend you guys to go on to liverpool.com uh, and uh, check out stuff over there. Joel Rabinovitz has wrote some good stuff on the possibilities of what will happen if we get the uh, cash injection. There's more plans in place as well to improve the area around Anfield. The money for the Anfield Road end stand, that money is put away in escrow already. So there are plans afoot, ladies and gentlemen. Liverpool Football Club and FSG have unfinished business. Um, and I'm getting really excited about this because just when we think life as a Liverpool fan can't get any better, 
the potential of Mr. Harlan coming in. His post-match interviews alone will be worth the money, by the way. But I think it's possible. I think it's doable. I think it may take us to, to splash out maybe €100 million, Euro, something like that. A little bit on top to sweeten the deal. Um, I agree, by the way, with the Dortmund CEO that I think Haaland's in the right place now at this time in his career. And even if Liverpool have to play the long game, even if we have to wait until 2022... I think this deal will be done. It might be that he stays at Dortmund another season. And as I said, we pay a little sweetener on top for the uh, first refusal. But keep your eye on this situation, ladies and gentlemen. Because can you imagine? Can you imagine our attacking options? Diogo Jota is only 23 years of age. We have young um, Harvey Elliott who's on loan right now as well. He looks sensational. Curtis Jones coming through. And then we have the attack that we have right now as well. Yes, they're getting on an age. 29, 30 years of age. But... Again, footballers these days can play to 33, 34. I'm so excited about this. I can't even hide my excitement. But what do you guys think? Do you think it's possible? I know United fans are almost convinced that they're signing them. But then again, they were convinced they were signing Sancho. Uh, they're always convinced that they're signing everybody. But their club right now, from the outside, looks like an absolute shambles. And uh, it's all good. It's all good in the red neighbourhood, ladies and gents. Uh, Marcus Kirk uh, Kverin, I hope. Thank you for the super chat, mate. Said Liverpool is by far the most supported club here in Norway, and Haaland would love to play at Anfield. As a Norwegian, I would love if he came. Um, I can't pronounce that name. Uh, yeah, I think you, you're just putting in a bit of a, a bit of Norwegian there, mate. And hopefully, any Norwegian viewers can see your comment and read it out. But I'm not having a bash at uh, speaking Norwegian. But what I can tell you is, we're going to have Jan Agafjortov on. In a couple of weeks' time to have a chat around everything football related. So, of course, I'll be asking Jan for his insight on the potential Haaland deal as well. So, yeah, brilliant, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, it's all good. Let me see what you guys think anyway. Mbappe over Haaland said Robbie Love. Yes, mate, but this isn't football manager. We can't just go out there and grab players we want. Um, Mbappe's wages will probably be double at least minimum, of what Haaland would, would be willing to come for. Mbappe probably talking minimum half million quid a week, I'd imagine, and that would absolutely smash our wage structure. So I, I won't deny Kylian Mbappe is a wonderful footballer, but I've always said it's very unlikely that those numbers would add up from a Liverpool perspective. What else we got? Would he get game time and who would he replace? Why, do, why are we always obsessed with replacing? Who would he replace? Who would he replace? Who would he, how about he'll get into the rotation? He'll become part of the attacking options that Kloppo has. I'll give you an option here. Let's say we move on Divock Origi. Let's say Shakiri moves on at the end of the season. I know there's a lot of fans right now who are saying, hang on there, Craig. Shakiri's starting to show some form, and I hear you. I'm just talking about possibilities here. So that would free up a space. Then you're talking about having attacking options of uh, Mohamed Salah, Sadio Mane, Roberto Firmino, Diogo Jota, Takumi Minamino, and Erling Haaland. You got. You nearly have to stop there and take a breath when you just to calm yourself down a little bit. And um, that's how it could potentially be done to free up a space in the squad. And I think we'll all agree that we'll never forget the moments that Origi's done, and hopefully we've got some more to celebrate with him. But he probably has fallen on the pecking order at Liverpool since the arrival of Diogo Jota as well. So yeah, it's um, it's exciting times, but nothing's guaranteed yet. But what what makes me happy about this the most, ladies and gentlemen, is that even if these rumours are absolute nonsense and you see Mbappe linked and all that type of stuff, how great is it that the club has been linked to these players now, probably by their agents? That's where Liverpool are right now. That's how strong of a brand that Liverpool Football Club are, thanks to our owners, thanks to our manager and all the great staff and players that have put us right back up on our perch. 